Hello and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. In my previous video, I did a sort of high level overview of a lot of the cooling options that are available to you in the game. And in this episode, I wanna go into one of those options in more detail, and that is the electrolyzer. So what is the basic idea here? Well, the basic idea is that the electrolyzer takes water, a thousand grams per second of it, and converts it into oxygen and hydrogen. And this oxygen and hydrogen have much lower specific heat capacities than the water that went in. And so even though 95 degree water might go into an electrolyzer and 95 degree oxygen and hydrogen might come out, the thermal energy in that water that went in was much higher than the thermal energy of the oxygen or the hydrogen that comes out. Water has, has, has a specific heat capacity of 4.179. Oxygen has a specific heat capacity of 1.005. And hydrogen, even though we're not going to cool it off in this build, has a specific heat capacity of 2.4. So all, of, all these outputs have lower specific heat capacity. They contain less heat energy, less thermal energy than the water that came in. And effectively what we're doing is using this electrolyzer to delete that heat. That thermal energy is now gone. And so we can design a system where the water that's coming in can be used to cool off the oxygen that's coming out and also provide cooling to another separate system. So uh, I've gone ahead and sort of designed what this sort of thing might look like. And I'm gonna go over each of the components now. And you can sort of substitute your own components in. The important thing is that you know what each of these components effectively does. So that you, way you can design your own, make them own, make them tailored to your own basis needs, et cetera, et cetera. So first off, very obviously we have an electrolyzer room. Uh, I am using a mechanical filter to separate out the hydrogen from the oxygen. What's important here is that you have an electrolyzer somewhere in this room and you have a way of separating out and putting into pipes uh, the oxygen going through through a line over here and the hydrogen line going over here. You also, of course, have a water line going in to supply the electrolyzer. That's kind of taken for granted. Um, but whatever oxygen module sort of thing that you want to use, whatever electrolyzer room setup you like to use, you can use that here. There's absolutely nothing stopping you. This, this works with everything, right? So, but you have an electrolyzer room. You have a water reservoir. This water reservoir is cooled down to the temperature that you want your oxygen to come out as. Uh, it's cooled down presumably to the temperature that you want to keep your base as. So this, this room can effectively be used as your sort of thermostat for the base. Set this temperature to be whatever you want by using cooling lines or heating lines. And you can use through the oxygen supply, um, you can use this to basically cool down your base to whatever temperature you like. Next up, we have a heat exchanger. This heat exchanger is going to be exchanging heat between the water coming in from this liquid reservoir and the oxygen that is coming out from this electrolyzer room. Uh, here I just have a bunch of diamond and aluminum piping. Um, this can be a lot of different things. Uh, doesn't You don't need diamond in this build. You don't need aluminum in this build. This is just overkill, but I just kind of wanted to show off what a heat exchanger might look like. Um, you can go ahead and substitute your own in here. Whatever you like is fine. I use it for sure though, a counterflow heat exchanger. I think this is very important because that ensures that the oxygen is going to come out at the temperature of the water and not um, some sort of uh, weighted average between the water and the oxygen. Uh, I want the oxygen coming out at a nice cool temperature. Here we have kind of another separate component. This is the, the oxygen storage slash whatever room. This is where all the oxygen is coming out at. Um, we see it's all at the temperature of the water, right? 20 degrees here, 20 degrees here. Uh, so we have a heat exchanger. We have our base effectively or whatever we're supplying oxygen to. We have a water reservoir set to whatever temperature we want this oxygen to come out as. Um, we also have a hydrogen storage slash usage area. I'll get to this sort of what these components might be in a bit. Um, but finally, we have a separate heat uh, heated room, basically. Uh, the water that, that comes out through this heat exchanger, you'll note is only 35 degrees. Uh, because it has much higher specific heat capacity than the oxygen, it is able to cool down the oxygen all the way down to 20 degrees and still have plenty of heat left over or plenty of sort of heat capacity left over uh, before it reaches 95 degrees, which is what the oxygen was coming out at, right? The oxygen here is leaving at, well, 94 degrees, but close enough. Um, in any case, we can cool down a separate system. Here I have this traveling through just basically a pool of hot supercoolant um, just for demonstration purposes. But this could be a room with thermoregulators uh, that are cooling down hydrogen in it. This could be a room with thermal aqua tuners that are immersed in oil. 
or water. Uh, this could be uh, whatever you want, some system that you're cooling down. But it's important that the system not be higher than 100 degrees because you don't want the water to boil in your pipes effectively. Um, the way we're throttling things, uh, it wouldn't actually damage these pipes, but I'll, I'll get to why in a, a, in a second. You can't have the water go over 100 degrees as it turns out. Um, in any case, this is going to be the other system that you're cooling, right? This is gonna be where you're absorbing the rest of your heat. And this is what you're going to be using to cool down other elements of your base, right? So this is going to be, um, if you have thermal aqua tuners in here, you're going to have whatever's going through these pipes be the cold stuff that you use to cool down some other area, right? Um, and it's a pretty good amount of heat, right? The water is coming in at 35 degrees Celsius. It's leaving at 95 degrees Celsius. Water has a specific heat capacity of 4.179. And this is a one kilogram per second of water that is traveling through here. So roughly speaking, we're looking at a quarter million DTUs per second that this water is absorbing, right? This room uh, through, the, through the actions of this water, through the heat exchange of this water is being cooled down by a quarter million DTUs per second. You can dump a quarter million DTUs per second of heat into this room and it'll remain at steady state, right? So um, this room can be a lot of things, but this is gonna be where you extract the rest of your cooling from the system effectively, right? This is gonna be where you really get your gains. Like this, this is making sure that your oxygen comes out at a temperature that you like. This is where you squeeze out the rest of your cooling. Once the water reaches 95 degrees or some target temperature below 100 degrees, you then put it through this electrolyzer. It gets converted to the lower specific heat capacity contents and the process repeats. Um, one note, right now I have the hydrogen is going out to a storage area and filling that storage area up. Of course, with a sort of self-propelled oxygen module, a SPOM as it's called, um, this is sort of just the nomenclature that we've adopted in, in Oxygen Not Included. This hydrogen would run to a hydrogen generator and that hydrogen generator would be used to power the electrolyzer and the pumps. Um, I don't have that set up here, uh, but also you could take this hydrogen and run it through another heating room, another room just like this. You could have another room just for hydrogen, right? Using the hydrogen that's coming out of this process to cool down this room uh, before taking the hydrogen and deleting it through a hydrogen generator. So you could have another separate system here uh, for cooling using the hydrogen that you get out of your electrolyzer room. Uh, this is assuming, however, that you plan on deleting that hydrogen through a hydrogen generator. If your plan is ultimately to cool that hydrogen down to liquid hydrogen, then you're not really getting anywhere by, by heating it up, right? But this is another option that's available to you. Uh, some notes. In my previous video, it was my belief that you could use the sort of pipe mechanic tricks of um, throttling the flow to one kilogram per second to prevent a state change of the water as it flows through these pipes and basically have this system go all the way up to say a thousand degrees. You didn't need to stop at a hundred degrees. You could go to a thousand degrees and then still have the water go and feed into this electrolyzer. Turns out that's not the case. Um, turns out that they have in fact patched this and the electrolyzer um, it won't break if you run super hot water through it. It'll simply release the water as steam to the environment. It will take it in and then just give it back out. Um, so the electrolyzer now does check to see whether or not the water you're feeding it is at a temperature where the water is still liquid. Uh, so above 100 degrees, it's, it's not going to break, it's not going to damage, but it's just not going to run. It's going to release the steam into your electrolyzer room and that's it. Um, so unfortunately we can't get the huge gigantic heat deletions that come from using thermium components uh, and superheating the water to really ridiculously high temperatures. Uh, however, this still does delete a good amount of heat. Just running a single electrolyzer, which is gonna be roughly sufficient to supply about eight or nine duplicates worth of oxygen, just a single electrolyzer is able to delete a quarter million DTUs per second. I mean, to put that in perspective, um, the electrolyzer itself only produces uh, 1.25 kilo DTUs, right? It's only a 1,250 kilo DTUs for this electrolyzer. These pumps don't produce any uh, heating at all. Uh, most of your buildings, like say a manual generator, 
A manual generator only produces one kilowatt, or sorry, uh, one uh, kilo DTU of, of heating, right? So this setup, one electrolyzer, can basically support enough cooling to cool down, uh, I mean, let me see. This is about 27, 28 coal generators, right? You could, you could be cooling down a lot of buildings with this setup right here. Uh, it's not that difficult, it's pretty easy. Um, obviously, you might design this system differently. You can work with a smaller heat exchanger, depending upon, or a larger heat exchanger if you wanna use sort of less expensive materials. Um, this room doesn't actually even need to be insulated. Uh, interestingly enough, you could have basically just vacuum around the edges and your heat exchanger in the middle and just a diamond block there. Um, there's a bunch of different things you can do with this heating room. A lot of these components are sort of mix and match with whatever you prefer. If you like a different sort of setup for your electrolyzer room, you can go with that. Uh, all sorts of things can be changed, but the basic principle is gonna remain the same, which is that the specific heat capacity of the water going into this electrolyzer is just gonna be much higher than the outputs. And so you can use it through a heat exchanger to cool down those outputs to whatever temperature you want. And at the same time have excess heat left over, heat capacity left over to cool down some other separate system. Uh, using those principles, I think this is a pretty easy build to make, pretty easy add-on to your um, to your electrolyzer setup. You can imagine just a sort of a self-propelled oxygen module sitting right here, and then you have something like water reservoir, heat exchanger, some sort of you know uh, thermo aqua tuner, thermo regular room right here, uh, and the, the system works just fine. So arrange these components however you like. Uh, set up your electrolyzers however you like, set up your heat exchangers however you like. Uh, the basic principle should remain the same and st should still work. And uh, that's it for this episode, I think. Um, in future episodes, I'll be covering things like the rock granulator, uh, covering things like the petroleum generator, if they haven't nerfed that one as well by the time that I make the video. Uh, I do expect that one to be the next thing on the chopping block. Um, and other things like the, uh, the Paku uh, cooling system that I talked about earlier. Basically, a lot of the builds that I discussed in my high-level overview in the previous episode, uh, plan on seeing them being made into videos kind of like this, deeper dives with more specific builds. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next time.